Hello, adventure riders from around the world. Nice sticker, isn't it? All right, I'm gonna surprise you today and will show you one different motorcycle. And now you might say, Pavlin, hold on a second. This is not adventure motorcycle. Why are you showing us this motorcycle? Because guys, the definition of adventure is unusual and excited experience usually involves some risk. Have you heard something about the type of the motorcycle we should have? No, of course not, because you can uh, reach this state of mind with any motorcycle. The reason I'm showing you this bike, because it's a very interesting uh, model and definitely deserves more attention. And maybe it's not my type of bike, but it could be a, a very good alternative for many of you, especially if you plan to travel mostly on the road. So this is actually BMW. Uh, 1150 model 2001 it is a boxer the typical gs engine and uh, the reason uh, why many people prefer this bike the reasons actually are many but uh, uh, after a few minutes i will give you the owner of the bike uh, my friend uh, mick to talks about it because i'm not uh, the right person to talk about it first because even if i ride the bike even if i make my chest my rides in my opinion it's very very subjective because this is not my type of bike i don't ride this these heavy motorcycles and my opinion might not be the right one that's why uh, i prefer his to talk uh, about the bike and his experience and so on and so on but uh, let me show you first the ergonomics you see i am 185 centimeters little above uh, six feet a foot and uh, yeah even that the bike is now on central stand i can have a flat feet all the time so it's suit me perfectly so Mike is uh, about my size a little bit shorter 182 so you will see him when he sit on the on the on the bike so ergonomically the bike is actually I have to confess it's very very comfortable and uh, it has this <laughs> absolutely beautiful seat actually when I when I see it now I feel that I need my remote control to turn on the TV and the screen is so big have a look this screen Come here, Mike, please. Show, show them the screen. It has this automatic windshield, so you can adjust the level down or up. And it is so big that you can actually smoke a cigarette behind. That, that big. It has a radio here. Let me show this. I'll, I'll grab the camera for a while. See the radio here? You can play the radio. Yeah? Which coaches are coaches in the NBA come to college or they perform or players? Cool, yeah. And the dashboard, it's very similar, or I will say exactly the same, or at least the, the analog instruments are the same as the uh, GS model, GS 1150, and the temperature gauge and the petrol gauge, everything is exactly the, the same. The lights here and everything, yeah, of course, these uh, plastic are different, the mirrors are on different position and the handlebar is different and it has all of these bmw features of course heated grips which are perfect and a little weird indicators which bmw owners don't mind but for someone like me it's a little confusing because left indicator is from here but to turn off the indicator you need to press this button then the right is from here and then you have to press this button but when you're not used to that it's more likely to press the the horn from here or to get confused but anyway it's a matter of time to learn how to use it and yeah in in common this bike is uh, let me talk a little bit more about specifications about the bike uh, it is a 1150 boxer it's a very well known known a motorcycle uh, 95 horsepower 95 was yeah, yeah no, 95 no. horsepower 17 inch front wheel 17 on the back drive shaft typical bmw it has this different different firings and it's it's uh, provide a perfect perfect uh, wind protection because of the size the massive size of the screen and everything and the seat mike has this is not a stock seat what is the brand of the seat this is a an M mjm mjm oh it is written here it's so comfortable man it's like as i said it's like like a barber chair yeah? <laughs> like a barber chair what you need is just a remote control and you can enjoy your life so uh the, there is not so much to be said about it because it's a very well known motorcycle but what i'm about to say that many people many riders are usually stick on the road mostly on the road 
and that's why they focus to to get something like a GS1200 but uh, actually or GS1150 but actually these bikes are much cheaper than uh, 1150 GS because they are not so popular they are not like fashion adventure motorcycle or, or whatever you want to name it and actually they will provide you even better experience especially if you, if you plan to stay mostly on the road stick on the road uh, with a pillion with a lot of uh, luggage it's it's a very very good option and uh, let me show you a few more things around and then i will uh, leave uh, mike to talk about it so there are some strange bmw things and maybe they are very practical but they are unusual like this handle here so this is a big handle i was wondering what it's about and then mike explained me that when you want to put it on central stand or you just grab it here and help you to lift the bike because it's a heavy what is the weight uh, mike I think it's about 250 kilos. 250 kilos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see on the back, and here's this big top case. So you know my opinion about the top cases. I, I'm not a big fan on it. But listen, I am not a big fan of the top cases on the adventure motorcycles because they are like nonsense. But on these big heavy motorcycles, they've got absolutely different ergonomics. And it is just fine. I'm not saying that it's very good, but it's just fine because these, bi these bikes are planned and, and built differently. All right, now I'm going to switch the mic to, uh, to uh, mic. I'll switch the mic. I'll switch the microphone to mic. All right. All right. Mic, please have a seat first for just a second. Just a second. Put this somewhere in your pocket. All right. I would like you first to sit on the bike and uh, maybe even remove it from the stand and yeah sure uh, let's, let's demonstrate yeah. this handle how it works so i'll just push it off the center stand to begin with yeah. oh. it's heavy yeah uh, yeah we've got to push it uphill yeah this is one of the cons it's a heavy motorcycle so uh presuming you've come off the side stand just stand him up your foot on the center stand and then grab the lever yeah. uh, if it's in gear at the moment so I'll pull the clutch in and then um, just ro it sort of rotates on a cam yeah. type action that's why it, it came so, so, so handy hmm. all right uh, I'll go on the other side because of the sun all right have a seat on the bike for a while just certainly your, uh, your ergonomics yeah yeah bike is uh, 182 centimeters again uh, yeah 182 centimeters six foot on the dot um, I've got uh, a three position height, uh, seat height. I have it set on the middle position, which is about right for me. Um, with my, my sort of my butt in the back of the saddle, I've got what I feel is the perfect reach to the bars. I have a, a slightly bent elbow, so I'm not rigid, uh, so I'm not tight in the shoulders at all, uh, and I'm not cramped either. Um, I've got plenty of room to shuffle forward for when you're in the twisties, so I can sort of ride the tank and I can still get pretty good purchase um, on the bars. In terms of um, in terms of the screen, I changed this screen the, uh, from the OEM to uh, this Aeroflow. They're available from America. Um, it is taller. Um, I think it's. Uh, I think it's two inches taller but it's three inches wider which is the main point so the original screen is very very good um, the only complaint I would have is that it's narrow for the for the width of the bike and the wind would still catch you on the shoulder but the best part of the screen at the moment yep. is here. yes yeah it's certainly um, it's it's it, it was probably a, a five thousand dollar bike now it's a five thousand and fifty dollar bike yeah perhaps yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> tell me the, the main reason why did you choose this bike instead of uh, GS model? Uh, well, it was a funny... Well, I think initially I wanted to get a GS, uh, but I'd never ridden one. I was, I'd was i owned a Kawasaki ZRX 1200 for 10 years, which I'd set up for touring with hard panniers, and I'd done a lot of work on it myself, and it, it, was, and it still is an excellent motorbike. Uh, and um, I, I was doing, and still am doing, a lot of touring and camping and fishing and... Uh, the nature of the Kawasaki is that I've constantly felt under pressure to ride it hard. Um, I'm constantly under pressure with work and family, so I don't really need that in my time off. And I wanted to get 
basically a bike that was a little um, more relaxing to ride. I'd never ridden um, a boxer. I didn't know whether I would like the change in power and torque. So this one was advertised locally, um, albeit not a GS. And I, I rang the, the guy who owned it and I, I told him that I was actually looking for a GS, but I wanted to ride this bike to see what it was like. And he said, come up and I rode it and I really liked it. So I bought it. Uh, the, the main point of difference between say th this and the ZRX in terms of um, touring is that I just relax into my ride more and rather than trying to get more out of the bike which had a lot of uh, potential. power potential now I'm riding to get more out of myself um, to enjoy it more to enjoy it more yeah all right cool and uh, tell me a few words about maintenance reliability we know that bmw are reliable yeah. bikes but what is your experience well i can't say that it's unreliable the i mean i've ridden japanese bikes i mean and they're inherently reliable so i don't understand the selling point for one this being more reliable than a japanese bike um, i guess i'll have to wait and see um, they've got a history they're, they're known for their longevity so sixty thousand kilometers on one of these is just broken in that's sort of the way people um, view these things, whereas 60,000 kilometres on a Japanese motorbike, uh, mine had 100 on it and it was still excellent, is probably considered to be getting uh, old, but I think it's just a state of mind. I, I haven't had to do much to this at all. I've I, I rebuilt the front shock, it has an Olin shock on it and it was leaking. I rebuilt the rear shock after I bought it. Um, I just changed changed the fluids uh, every ten thousand kilometres, uh, mm -hmm. and I ride it. It's fine. I just go through consumables, tyres, and oil. How you find the maintenance prices, like oil, brakes, and stuff like that? Is it affordable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, it's not. They're not. It's not. They're no more expensive. I don't okay. think. Maybe the um, drive shaft oil uh, and gearbox oil is is definitely dearer. But I mean, any shaft driven bike would be the same. And what what is what do you think about the suspension? Yeah, it's very um, it's very plush, um, but you can you can also adjust it up to be quite uh, stiff and firm. It, it it's very different in terms of the you know the the tally lever suspension uh, doesn't dive under braking, which is unusual, um, particularly in cornering. But I find that it's very confidence inspiring. For you don't have to think too much. Uh, so going into corners, mistakes, yeah? it's very forgiving. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, do you think that this bike is is uh, a proper bike for a newbie rider, or is you need to have at least some experience? Uh, well, you you can't ride it in this country as a learner. So, um, you just have to get your head around the weight, um, and once you've done that, yeah, I, I think it's fine. You can. It's, it's, I think it's a very rideable bike. And uh, what is the petrol consumption and the range? Yeah, it's, it's it's it hovers around five liters per hundred kilometers. Of course, that depends on on the on the terrain and the and the weather conditions. Uh, it's got a twenty twenty five ish liter tank, twenty four twenty five liter tank. Um, you, you comfortably get four hundred kilometers out of that tank. I normally fill it by then, but I have had it up to about four hundred and fifty kilometers. But you're pretty much ready for a break by then. And uh, what about? wind protection and uh, vibrations do we have any uh, wind protection perfect really yeah, with this screen, yeah. yeah and, the, and the fairing the fairing rests really well where the mirrors are that, that just keeps the wind off your hands straight away so even though they're low and probably a bit confusing and this uh, protect your knees yeah absolutely yep um, the vibration uh, yeah they, I guess they get a bit they're being a, a, a twin they do get a little vibey um, until you go into sixth, which is an overdriven gear, and then the vibes just go away. Okay. Yep. And what is the, the cruising speed, the comfortable speed of oh, this motorcycle on the highway? This thing is really, really happy at about 125 kilometres an hour. Cool. Seems to be the sweet spot for it. It'll go a lot. It'll go quite a bit quicker, um, but once you get it up to three and a half thousand RPM, that's where it wants to stay. And what is the price difference between this one and uh, GS model in yeah. range? Let's, like I said, this will be like 30-40% cheaper? Yeah, well I think this, um, I mean I got this for a really good price, but um, 
these are less desirable than the than the GS. So, you know, I, I would expect that you'd pay maybe another two thousand dollars for a GS, two or three thousand dollars for a, for a good one, for one in the same condition as this equivalent. Okay. Could you please start the engine? Yeah. To, to listen to the voice, the noise. This is, yeah, this has just got a standard, uh, OE, an OEM exhaust on it, which I think is fine. I don't really like being deafened when I'm on a long trip. It's definitely better on a long trip to be quiet, yeah? Yeah, I mean, anything that, anything that, um, Eliminates fatigue is good. All right. So, hmm, this is pretty much everything. I think we covered almost all topics. And yeah, guys, I really hope that this information will be useful for some of you, because as I said, the adventure is only state of mind. Thank you very much, Mike, for everything. Oh, for yeah. everything you have done for me, for costing <laughs> me, for helping with everything, for showing me around. We have actually. Uh, a beautiful sunny day i'm lucky as usual so guys if you want to see many more videos like this because as you can see my channel is very colorful so yesterday i was riding uh, on the rocky uh what was Ru Ru what was the name mount, of mount Kori. mount Kori, mount Kori. today we're testing uh, this gs uh, this uh, well, bmw RT. Mm. rt so well good reason to subscribe see you next time ciao